my name is Steve welcome back to my shop this video is going to be the construction of the Tom Lipton chamfer fixture a month ago or so Tom showed this on his channel and he made plans available for it and I got a set of plans from him I have since gotten a piece of material which I actually showed in one of my previous videos I showed the uh, taking the mill scale off of it using distilled white vinegar to remove the mill scale I'm not going to go into a lot of the details as far as the actual machining operations it's squaring up the block and you've seen that a thousand times but what I will spend some time in on is the order of operations which is very important and some of the setups on this in order to get the angles and so on correct but before we get started on this project I just want to make reference to my last video on the true line 8 alignment fixture that was built by Bruce Witham of Gemtrek on for my round column mill and I had several people question the laser edge finder that I used and so I figured I'd give you some detailed information on the availability of that I'll leave a link in the description of the video where you can find it but it is called the Laser Center Edge Finder and their website is lasercenteredgefinder.com I'll show a close-up of that I found it to be very useful for finding the center and it's available in several different versions the one that I have is a single point they also make it with crosshairs and they make it with concentric circle as an edge finder I found it difficult to use but as a center finder it's second to none out there I'll bring you in and show you a close-up of the uh, label that's on the edge finder So I'm going to be machining this fixture out of a piece of 2 by 4 by approximately 7 inches long A36 hot rolled steel. So I'm going to take you over the mill and we'll get started. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, it's time to lay out the block. I've got it all blued up with the dicum. After finishing the machining, it ended up about a hundred thousandths shorter the height of it than the prints call for, and the prints call for it being four inches tall. And since the dimensions on the print are taken from the bottom, I've got some older sets of gauge blocks. They're incomplete sets that I use for setup and so on. And I have two one hundred thousandths gauge blocks, so I put them underneath so that I could continue to use this bottom line as a datum and just take the dimensions off of the drawing without making any adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and start scribing this according to the drawing. Here's a copy of the drawing that I printed out from the file that uh, Tom Lipton sent to me. The first line I scribed is a setter line of some holes that are drilled through it for lightning purposes. The next line is actually the most critical dimension and that's two inches. Now there's a pocket that needs to be milled out of the back to make clearance for the grinding stone and that dimension is taken from the top as a reference. So I'm going to turn this over and scribe the a line an inch and seven eighths from the top surface and that would be on what I would call the back of the fixture now what I'm going to do since the length of this finished off at just a little bit under seven inches which is what the drawing calls for I'm going to draw a center line and that way I'll use that as my reference for the layout items that are measured from the ends. Okay, I've got the block all scribed up now and I'm going to take it over and mount it up in the mill. Now the order of operations is a little bit important on this because once I cut the 45 out of here it's going to make it more difficult to 
hold the piece to cut the pocket in the back. So I'm going to cut the pocket in the back first. It's not a precision measurement, so I'm going to be just cutting it. I'll check the dimensions, but I'm just going to be cutting it to the scribed lines. So I'm going to take it over the mill and get set up over there. First cut was 25 thousandths. Just wanted to see how it was going to cut. That's pretty good. So I'm going to continue on and I will bring you back when I'm a little closer to finished. This is my last 50 thousandths deep roughing pass. Okay, I've got ten thousandths to go on the depth, which is exactly where I wanted to be. So now I'm going to put the finishing end mill in, and I've got about a ten thousandths cut all around the edges, plus the depth with the finishing end mill. Okay, I've got my finishing end mill all set up. The pocket is all finished. I'm happy with the finish on it and it's the correct depth. So now I'm going to drill the lightning holes in it.
Well, this is the final hole. That's it. Deburr this. Okay, there's the roughed out piece. I've got my one inch diameter holes to lighten the weight of it a little bit. And I've got the pocket cut out of the back. And next I will be setting it up to mill the 45s on it. But I've got to go and break down the milling machine and set up a new configuration for the vise. So I think that's going to end this part one of the Tom Lipton chamfer fixture build. In the next part I will mill out the V on it and I'm going to do something a little different with it and then I'm also at some point going to be surface grinding it and I don't know whether that'll go into part two or whether it's going to end up in a part three on a standalone so until the next video I'll see ya this is my first setup I've got a 5 8 roughing end mill in and I'm going to mill it out almost to the scribe lines. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of a finishing allowance and then I'll finish it off with a finishing end mill.